Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Entertainment Daily, a short roundup of the top entertainment stories in today's news. Just over a year after being dismissed from ABC following the disclosure of their affair, TJ Holmes hinted that he and Amy Robach face restrictions from visiting major amusement parks, a consequence of their termination. During the February 8th episode of their podcast, Amy and TJ, Holmes alluded to their apparent prohibition from Disney parks following their exit from ABC, a Disney-owned entity. The revelation came about as Holmes and Roebuck conversed with former Bachelor contestant Matt James on their podcast. James mentioned his intention to partake in a 5K race at Disney Park, prompting Holmes to suggest that he and Amy might find themselves unwelcome at the event. I am going to run the London Marathon. I'm going to try to get my girlfriend, Rachel Kirkconnell, into a race, the Disney 5K. James shared, indicating his girlfriend's fondness for Disney as a motivating factor for her participation. However, Holmes quickly interjected, indicating that participation might not be possible for him and Roback. We would love to run with you down at the 5K. I don't think we are allowed on the park's grounds anymore, he remarked, with both he and Amy responding to the situation with laughter. We will check. Last we checked, we weren't, he added, without delving into the specific reasons behind the supposed ban, though it is believed to be tied to their firing from ABC. Before their dismissal, Holmes and Roback had been at the helm of the third hour of Good Morning America for two years, their professional relationship coming to an end as details of their affair emerged. Victoria Beckham, Kate Moss and Gigi Hadid were among the 40 luminaries featured on the cover of British Vogue's final edition under Edward Enifel. However, Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, was notably absent from the star-studded lineup, which also included Salma Hayek, Naomi Campbell and Miley Cyrus. Despite her previous close relationship with Enifel, having guest edited an issue of British Vogue in 2019, Meghan was missing from Enifel's farewell cover that spotlighted some of her acquaintances, such as Oprah Winfrey, Serena Williams and Jamila Jamil. The omission sparked curiosity and speculation among royal enthusiasts. One observer remarked on the absence, suggesting that Meghan was likely invited to participate. Questions about her availability on the day of the shoot were raised on X by users including those addressing Omid Scobie, an author known for his coverage of the Duchess. The reasons behind Meghan's absence from the magazine cover remain unspecified. Her Forces for Change edition in September 2019, which celebrated influential women like Gemma Chan, Jane Fonda and Jacinda Ardern, became the magazine's fastest selling issue in its 104-year history, selling out in under 10 days. Edward Enfall has previously addressed the scrutiny Meghan faced upon her entry into the royal family in a conversation with Sky News. While acknowledging that racism might have played a part in the criticism, he suggested that the challenges were more complex, attributing them to the intricacies of royal institution dynamics. Enfall, who has lauded King Charles for his modern approach to monarchy and his work with the Prince's Trust, maintained that Meghan's treatment was unjust, emphasising her courage and the unfair expectations placed upon her. Bill Maher recently revealed his decision to cancel the release of a two-hour podcast episode featuring Kanye West, citing concerns over amplifying the rapper's anti-Semitic sentiments. During the latest installment of TMZ Investigates, Kanye West Unhinged but Unstoppable, Ma shared insights into his initial intention behind inviting West onto his podcast. Club Random with Bill Maher. He had hoped the interaction could serve as an educational opportunity for West. Despite enjoying what Ma described as an amazing fun time during the recording, he ultimately chose not to publish the episode. Marr expressed his reluctance to play any part in disseminating anti-Semitic ideologies, particularly given West's significant influence among young audiences. The 68-year-old comedian emphasized his concern about West's potential to misinform his predominantly young fan base about Jews and the Middle East. Ma voiced his apprehension about West's capability to spread the fertilizer for harmful stereotypes, likening his rhetoric to contributing to a false narrative about Israel and Jewish people being nefarious. By opting not to air the podcast, Ma aims to avoid providing a platform for such views to gain traction. In concluding his explanation, Ma described West as a very charming anti-Semite, highlighting the rapper's persuasive appeal despite the dangerous nature of his views. 
The decision by Ma underscores his stance against contributing to the spread of anti-Semitism and his commitment to responsible broadcasting. During a concert at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee, Drake humorously addressed a topic that had been circulating widely online. As he began his performance, the rapper quickly touched on the anticipation from the audience, stating, I know you're probably waiting on me to address this, so the rumours are true. After a moment of suspense, he lightened the mood by revealing, My dad is here. That's what you all were waiting for, making it evident that his actual intent was to playfully deflect from the recent online buzz. Indeed, Drake's father, Dennis Graham, was present at the concert, but the jest was Drake's way of navigating the conversation around a viral video that had sparked widespread speculation earlier in the week. The video in question seemingly depicted the 37-year-old Grammy-winning artist in a private moment, lying in bed and engaging in personal activity. The video garnered attention partly because the headboard seen in the clip resembled one from Drake's $185 million private jet, suggesting authenticity. Drake, who was reportedly arriving in Nashville around the time the video surfaced, even shared a snapshot from an airplane's cockpit on his Instagram story with the caption, Cashville, I'm home. While Drake has not formally confirmed his presence in the video, he reportedly responded with humour when popular streamer Aidan Ross inquired about the footage during a private conversation. Simultaneously, as the internet was abuzz with discussions about Drake's leaked footage, Corey Althoff initiated divorce proceedings from his wife, podcaster Bobby Althoff, after four years of marriage, citing July 4th, 2023 as the date of separation. This was notably the same month Drake appeared on Bobby's The Really Good Podcast. The following month, amidst rumors of a possible affair between Drake and Bobby that purportedly led to the marital split, the 26-year-old mother of two firmly denied any romantic involvement with the singer in a conversation with Bartle Sports founder Dave Portnoy, labelling the hookup rumours as not true. Will Wheaton, the actor known for his role in Star Trek The Next Generation, recently expressed his outrage on Facebook towards Larry David for his actions involving the Muppet Elmo during a segment on the Today Show. Wheaton criticised the 76-year-old Curb Your Enthusiasm creator for what he termed an assault on Elmo, a gesture for which David later issued a lukewarm apology on the show. Having been open about his own experience with child abuse, Wheaton called David an a-hole and shared that the incident had reawakened painful memories of being physically abused by his father in his youth. The reaction on social media to Wheaton's post was mixed, with some fans supporting his emotional response while others ridiculed him for his sensitivity towards the treatment of a puppet character. Wheaton explained that he had delayed watching the clip because he anticipated it would upset him. I heard about Larry David assaulting Elmo on live television, but didn't watch it until now because I knew it would upset me, he stated. It's even worse than I thought. Elmo was a cherished friend to a generation of children. He emphasized that in the context of Sesame Street, Elmo is a child and criticized the character's handling for undermining the show's efforts to support children's mental health. Wheaton vehemently described David as a stupid, self-centered, tone-deaf a-hole. In revealing his personal history of abuse, Wheaton connected his visceral reaction to the incident. When I was growing up, my dad would grab me by the shoulders and shake me while screaming in my face. He choked me more than once, Wheaton recounted. I'm a 51-year-old man and my heart is pounding right now, recalling how I felt as a little boy who loved Grover as much as today's kids love Elmo. Wheaton condemned David's actions as appalling, unforgivable, despicable, and equated them to his own experiences of abuse. He further criticized David's apology on the show as insincere and indicative of a lack of understanding regarding the gravity of his actions. Following the incident, the hosts of the Today Show facilitated an apology from David during his appearance, where he was discussing the 12th and final season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, a show that has been celebrated since its HBO debut in 1999. More entertainment in just a moment. Dakota Johnson recently reflected on her not-so-pleasant experience while filming the final episode of The Office during her appearance on Late Night with Seth Meyers. The star of Madam Web humorously recounted how her excitement to be part of the series finale of the beloved NBC comedy didn't match the reality of her time on the set. Johnson, laughing, admitted to Myers, that was honestly the worst time of my life. I loved that show so much. And they were like, do you want to be in the series finale? And I was like, of course, thinking I'd show up for like half a day. I was there for two weeks and I'm barely in the show. She also shared insights into the atmosphere on 
said as the show wrapped up, noting that the cast was not only sad, but also entangled in complex dynamics that had developed over a decade. Johnson revealed some people didn't speak to each other, and I'm coming in like, so excited to be here. No one wanted to talk to me. I was just in the background of all these scenes, faxing things. Seth Meyers lightheartedly complimented her performance, especially her convincing portrayal of faxing in the background, to which Johnson responded with details of her minor role. In the show's conclusion, she portrayed an accountant brought in by Dwight Schrute to replace Kevin after his dismissal. The office celebrated for its humour and unique characters, starred a talented ensemble cast, including Steve Carell, Jenna Fisher, Angela Kinsey, John Krasinski, Mindy Kaling, BJ Novak and Ed Helms, and concluded after nine seasons from 2005 to 2013. Johnson also mentioned in a 2021 interview with The Hollywood Reporter that her cameo was initially intended to set up a potential spin-off. However, she expressed skepticism about the creative direction of such a project, saying, if anything else just falls away, maybe you'll find me in that office spin-off that no one wants to watch. I don't know in what world that would have worked for me creatively. Sometimes things need to end when they're supposed to end. And there you have it. Please follow us on Spotify or Apple. If you like the show and you're on Apple, hit those five stars. It really helps us out. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Entertainment Daily. 